My name is Ali Nawani. I'm the high school principal at Community Charter School of Cambridge. We are a school that is predominantly students of color, about 97%. Most of our students are either first-generation Americans or immigrants, and primarily first in their families to go to college. The expectation on that student body is that 100% of our students are going to get into four-year colleges and attend. Our program is mostly focused on college access for students for whom uh, you know, college has been an elusive dream. Something that I realized was that most of our students don't have a lot of the skills I know that students will need when they are in college. College is really hard for our kids to persist through, not to get into, not the academic coursework. It's, a, it's the soft skills and the social uh, dynamics of, of college that become really hard for our students. We decided to create an overarching vision for our high school graduate because we wanted to make sure that students leave with a set of skills that will allow them to survive and then eventually to thrive. CCSC's vision for the graduate is that our students will be able to communicate effectively, prioritize urgent and important tasks, problem solve, take ownership of their success or lack thereof, be punctual, and then be able to connect all these skills and transfer them out into the real world. The first step of the process for me was to figure out what those five or six values are that I really care about and commit them to paper. I shared the, those six words um, that I had come up with with the grade level leaders. So Mr. Namani presented the six values that he thought would benefit our students the most as lifelong learners and contributing adults in society. And so we collectively brainstormed based on our experiences, based on the school's mission statement, what we wanted a CCSE graduate to be able to do. And then we took uh, that vision and broke it down into components, you know, where we want kids to be at by the end of their freshman year, their sophomore year, and so on. Our overarching vision is comprised of three parts, the values, the objectives, and the supporting action steps. We designed objectives for each grade, so students in that grade by the end of the year would be able to meet our values. Well, if we want them to be able to do X in senior year, what would they need to be able to do by junior year? By the end of 10th grade, we want students to be able to prioritize their own to-do lists. But in order to do that, what does that look like in, in May? What does that look like in January? And more importantly, where do we start in September with our students in getting them to that place? Um, and we did that with all of the values. These grade level leaders all developed the objectives for their particular grade level and then went to their grade level teams where they went, these are the objectives for our grade level. What are the actions? What are the lived action going to look like? So the objectives outline what students should be able to achieve by the end of the year. The actions outline what teachers will do throughout that year to help students meet those objectives. We sat down and said, what are the things that need to be consistent across all of our classes for all of our 12th grade students so that they're becoming prepared to do this? And that's the point at which we started talking about really specific granular policies. We want students to be able to communicate uh, effectively, promptly, professionally by email, in person, uh, by taking advantage of office hours. We want them to be able to code switch between different contexts depending who they're talking to and on the nature of their relationship. In ninth grade advisor, they had a lesson where they um, practiced reading different emails that students had sent to teachers and analyzing it from the lens of like which student is going to get what they want. Like if you send a teacher an email that's just like I'm confused I need help versus will you please meet with me on Monday after school then the teacher's more likely to respond to the second one and like beyond the basic level of like they can both be grammatical they can both be polite but like how to ask for help in a way that's actually going to get what you, what you need. If our students don't have the advocacy skills that they will need as sort of mi minority, marginalized students um, in, in, in this country, they will struggle. One of the most important pieces of our vision feels like stu giving students the skills and the tools necessary to advocate on their behalf and then use that training to actually communicate and advocate for themselves professionally. 
There was a very collaborative process for turning um, that vision into a series of action steps, and we ended up coming to a pretty strong consensus. At every level of this process, the ownership was transferred down to the person who was responsible for seeing the vision through. The vision was developed by the person whose job it became to enact them. So I think iteration and collaboration have been the two sort of hallmarks of doing this work. We are at about the halfway mark of the school year, and those same stakeholders are in the room as we collectively reflect on what progress we have made or haven't, and reshift our gears towards where we're going to go from now to the end of the semester to make sure that we are able to reach those goals. And so moving forward, we're going to be able to revisit and almost increase the rigor in which we tackle these skills with kids at each grade level. And there's always an opportunity for people who are actually in their classrooms implementing this policy to have some feedback on it. And we collect a lot of data on how it's going, how it's affecting students across the achievement spectrum, and whether it's this is still a set of commitments that we want to continue. It should be something that uh, that is living, breathing, and it, it should come with action steps, and those action steps should be developed by the people whose job it is to take those actions. The most important thing is realizing that a vision in of itself will do little to nothing. I think that this is an attempt to be proactive about what we want our students to be as human beings.